Hey everyone, today I'm doing an updated tutorial on the subalert program. Previously we had a pretty decent tutorial except for the fact that now it's out of date because they've made some improvements to the program. So let's start from scratch. First things first, you need to download it obviously. And once you've downloaded your file, you need to open the zip file and extract it into the folder where you want to keep the program, which I've already taken the liberty to do. So let's open it up and see what's inside. Now you'll see all these wonderful little files, but you want to double click on the one that says subalert.exe. That'll actually open the program itself. So the first thing you're going to see is a message from the dev, and it'll just be whatever little new things they put up and then you're going to get a little welcome message and it's going to ask if you want to donate or launch the program I of course am always an advocate for donating to awesome creators of programs like this but let's launch the program shall we now this is not the first time I have opened this program the very first time you open it it will show you a little pop-up screen and that pop-up screen will ask you for your account name now when they ask you for the account name or the channel name they actually want your username not the full web address so make sure you only put in the name so in my case that name is bmails so you can reset it later if you want to but basically it's just it'll look like this this is the same window so you just put in just the name now over here you're gonna see I already have follower alerts checked but when you first start it you're going to need to set all this up. So if you are using Twitch, you're going to leave it on the Twitch setting. If you're using Hitbox, which is a new thing, you can now try using Hitbox with it, which I think is pretty cool. Here you have the enable services, and it's pretty much this down here. But <laughs> you can enable followers, subscribers, and donations if you wish. Then you have the configure alerts, which is all those three things and to get into it to configure it. Then you have the manage sounds, which is the configuration for your sub sounds and your donation sounds. Your banned words is a section that you can use to ban certain words or phrases that are, well, unwanted when people donate. So that's pretty easy to understand. Um, let's go to configure the follower bar. So I already have mine kind of set up, but what we're going to do is kind of explain how this all works. So let's say that you don't use a graphic. Let's say you're just opening this up for the first time. Well, then you would see something that looks like this, but you know, maybe with like a plain font here rather than the one I have. And what you get is you have a background, which is basically we can't see it that well right now because the bar is there but here we go see the background is either going to be an image you put in or the default image um, if you don't want to show the default image you could just unselect that and then you would just see the bar like this and then you can show an icon and the icon is whatever you want it to be or it could be the sub alert image I suppose whoops wrong one but Yes, you can put your own little icon in here. Personally, I don't I don't bother with an icon, but I can see how it would be useful for some. Underneath these three buttons, we have the settings for the various things. You have your window settings, so you can adjust the size of it. You can decide whether you want it to always be on top or not. I usually unselect that. Um, there's bar settings, you know, again, how big you want it to be. You can round the corners like that. It gives you kind of a a less generic looking bar I guess you can change the color to any color of the rainbow like you can see that one and then get whatever you want here we have the background image settings and for me since we're gonna do that we're gonna just select our thing and then boom that's how you add your custom background so if you have a graphic that you want to kind of use or whatever that you created, you can simply use that in the program rather than just the solid color. So we'll leave that there for now. Over here, we have text settings and you can change the color of the text to whatever you like. Let's change it to that for fun. You see it just changed. Here you can change the font. Now most fonts will work as you can see right now I'm using, I believe I'm using the razor header. Um, 
most of the fonts will work some of them will not let me show you like a good example is I couldn't get some custom ones like this quicksand font I couldn't really get it to work it just it doesn't look like it's supposed to so some may or may not work fair warning ahead of time but most of the time you can get them to work see whatever you like you can adjust the size in the font as well and whether it's bold and whatnot depending on if it's supported for uh, the purpose of trying to make sure your font is centered correctly you can use a temporary border so you can kind of see the square space of where the font only is over here we have your icon settings and in the program let's show the icon again you can manipulate the size of the icon actually in the program which is so cool because if you have an icon that's kind of like an image that's kind of bigger than what you want and you don't have to don't want to really take the time to resize it you don't have to you could always just shrink it down in the program i think that's pretty nifty over here we have the miscellaneous settings which is play a sound add a new sound. Now the default sound is beep and I'll let you listen to that. It's just a little beep. Um, I went ahead and made my own sound. I'm using something called cheering which I made. I think it's pretty cool. We'll listen to that again. See? So you can add, you can add and customize your own sound. We have a volume sliding bar here. So you can make it louder or softer all the time. You can choose the animation, whether you want it to go up, down, left, right, whatever you want. Fade in, fade out. There's all kinds of all kinds of different options here. There you go. This is up on the top. It, it kind of looks weird right now, but <laughs> hold on. Let's see here. But you get the idea. There's lots of stuff to choose from. You can just have whatever kind of animation fits your image best. Uh, we have your animation speeds and animation length. Down here at the very, very bottom, we have the follower settings and it's custom text and follower goals. So here you could change it. I've got it to say has just followed. I think it defaultly says just followed. The name part here is basically the thing that will tell it to say the person's name who just followed. So you leave that part alone. Over here you have your follower goal. And uh, for me, I'm at 140 subscribers-ish last time I checked, so I'm making it 200. And then when you're done, you're like, yep, that looks good. You come over here to save and close, and then you would hit start. Now, right before we go into the test, I want to show that the other things, that the subscriber bar, the only difference in the settings is this part down here. And this part is that you have combo sounds uh, which activate if you have a number of subscribers subscribing within a time period and we can use alternate server and whatnot and let's just look at the donation so you can see that too the donation bar is a lot like that the only difference is the bottom you have to select what you're using donation tractor i'm raising you know steam tip all these things down here it just all has to do with just that but everything else is pretty much the core same thing so once you figure one out you figured them all out um and band words obviously self-explanatory on how to use that so anyways let's go to our followers save and close and let us open this up shall we so hit start now once you start the program you can't move this fair warning you can't <laughs> so if you don't want it there it's usually a good idea to move it but for right now we're gonna leave it here because I don't really care so we've got our little infos here green you can send chat commands from sub alert um, I don't remember what F stands for I think I think that's it's another one of the status windows oh it went green so whatever it means it's good and then we have the bottom one if yellow make sure you have at least one donation in your account will turn green as soon as you do so basically if one of these shows up red or yellow you know something's up so you can show your session log and this is basically just like 
a quick little layout of information for you. You have subs today, followers today, uh, donated today. You have latest sub, latest followers, your recent log. Uh, you can enlarge the window if it's too small or whatnot. You have a test screen buttons for your followers, subscribers, and donations. You can choose how many times to test it. Now the new thing that I think is pretty cool is they've added a giveaway. And this is in beta, so I'm not sure how well it works yet. I haven't actually had a chance to try it out. But from what I can tell, the general idea here is in your channel when it's active and whatnot, you can set it for either free for all or subscriber only. Uh, you can do a new selection. I'm assuming that's if you've already started one, maybe. Not quite sure, because like I said, I haven't had a chance to try this yet. Um, but the idea is you use a keyword and you have everyone in chat say exclamation point pick me like that and enter it and then you can hit select a viewer and the sub alert will randomly select someone and pop it up on your screen in the same form that it does a new follower or sub or donation and whatnot. So that's pretty nifty. I think that's really cool. So that's one of the new features they've added recently. But that is the basics of actually utilizing the program. Now I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how we put it into use in Open Broadcaster. Now this program, keep in mind, will probably work in other broadcasters so long as it allows you to enter in a window capture for it. So it should work. Don't quote me on all programs. It just depends on how the uh, broadcasting program you're using works. So in Open Broadcaster, we open a window capture, you name it, let's make it subalert like that. Now it's going to ask you up here, window, and you want to choose main alert, and then you want to hit OK. And now you're going to see it pop on the screen, so let's do edit, and we can move it around now. So I'm going to put it right here in the middle up top where we can see it. And you can see it's this kind of ugly green color right now. And what I like to do is leave the background color so I can see where I'm moving it. And if it's nice and bright, I know it kind of just helps me see it better. So you right click the properties, open that window back up. Now you can use color key here and you can chroma key that sucker out by doing that. And boom, it's invisible when you're not using it, right? So let us test this so you can see basically what it looks like. So go test followers. And there you go, people. Simple as that. You have your adorable little follower alert. Now in uh, OB, you can sort of fiddle with the size, but it's not going to look as good as, you, as if you had actually fixed it in the program itself. So I suggest getting used to it however you want it in the program and then testing it out, you know, and worrying about the fine tuning in OBS, leave that to just like really minute sizes because seriously, you don't, it's not going to look right if you try and like make this really tiny thing and then enlarge it really huge in OBS. It's just it's not going to look good. So make sure you do all your editing in the program, get it the way you like it, and then it should look just fine. So one more time, see it looks all nifty. You may see a little lime green border right here, right now. I never see it when I'm actually streaming, however, sometimes I see it in the preview window. Uh, I don't know why, but yeah, that's basically how you use it, guys. If you have any questions or comments on the video and you need any advice on using the program, feel free to ask and leave a comment below and I'll try and help you out. And before leaving, I want to say thank you so much for the creator of SubAlert actually linking my tutorial last time. And I hope you enjoy the new tutorial and that it's helpful to a lot of people. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.